now let's look the look at the pre this preemptive version of this uh, you know a priority based algorithm so preemptive version means we are going to stop a process as and when a new process with high priority is available that is called preemption Pre non no preemption means uh, we are not going to look at any other process once we are chosen a process with some priority we are going to finish it off right so um, here you should be careful I even mean, a bit careful so let me just uh, write this corresponding rows it will be easy for us okay now the first one at zero at time zero if i start it the first process which is available is um, process p1 i have no other choice therefore i am going to run it till what point you should just see what is the arrival time of the next one so next one's arrival time is one so you can run it only till one o one because the next one arriving is having higher priority therefore you preempt this and you put the next one so what is next one process next process is p2 and now p2 uh, how much how much should i run it till the next one is available so next one is available at uh, you know uh, time 2 and it's having higher priority therefore run it for only one amount of one unit of time and then schedule the next one and how long should i execute the next one p3 so till the next one is available the next process is available at 3 therefore run it till 3 because uh, the next process is having higher priority in case if the next process is not having higher priority you can keep executing the same one right but here it is next process is available at 10 therefore take it and schedule it so p4 how long should i run it till the next one with higher priority is available see this so next one's priority is 8 but it is arriving at 4 you need not stop for it the reason is uh, you know this is having higher priority compared to 8 therefore you can run till 5 because only at 5 a process with higher priority 12 is available right therefore run this one till 5 no problem right and at this point at this point we are going to schedule this p6 because it is having the highest priority and now if you watch it it is having the highest priority and it need not be stopped at all it can be run till completion so now to complete it time taken is 4 therefore run till 9 and one more thing whenever you are running a process and then you know preempting it just keep track of its you know remaining burst time here the p1 burst time is 4 initially but then it has run for 1 unit therefore the remaining burst time is 3 and p2 burst time is 2 initially it has run for 1 unit therefore its remaining burst time is 1 and p3 is 3 it has run for 1 unit therefore remaining burst time is 2 and p4 is uh, actually 5 is the burst time but it has run for 2 units therefore remaining burst time is 3 and coming to this p5 it has not been scheduled yet but p6 has run to completion therefore p6 is over completely right this is over completely fine and now the time is 9 and all the process are available now it is up to you you can choose the uh, one with the highest priority and from here on it will be non preemptive version the reason is once all the process have arrived now we are just going to see the priority and whichever is having highest priority will take it directly right so now among all this which one is having highest priority the remaining one 12 is over so if you look at the numbers next one is 10 isn't it therefore p4 will be scheduled and how long should it be run it should be run for three units of time right isn't it because that is the time remaining so three units is nothing but 12 so 10 is over now after this what is the next available process the next available is 9 highest process 9 and it's uh, if you schedule it which is p7 it is going to run till completion uh, till 6 units therefore 18 and it will be over right so this is over and among the remaining what is the next one 8 is the next one right so you can take the p5 and what is its remaining burst time watch it it has never been scheduled before therefore its burst time is 1 and i'm going to run it till completion therefore till 19 i'll run it it will complete right and then the next one is uh, in the remaining one the next highest priority is 8 so if i take it and schedule oh 8 is over right yes just now p5 is over and in the remaining one which one is remain highest 6 4 and 2 the 6 is highest and its remaining burst time is 2 therefore i am going to schedule p3 and run it for two units and it is going to be finished and uh, what is its uh, two units right which means 21 fine and in the remaining one we have only two process one is 4 another is 2 so i can take p2 and i can run it for uh, 
how much time the remaining bus time is one therefore i am going to run it for only one unit and it is going to be over here right and then p p1 um its remaining bus time is 3 finally 25 got it so that is how uh, this could be done so only one thing you should be careful here is we are going to run the run a process till that point until which uh, this um, you know a process with higher priority becomes available so whenever a process with higher priority becomes available you are going to preempt this process and schedule that higher priority process right but then once all the process become available then you are going to pick the one with highest priority and since no more process is going to arrive late at later point you can run it till completion therefore at some point this uh, no non preemptive version this, this preemptive version will convert to the non preemptive version at what point when all the process have arrived it is exactly same as shortest job first even in shortest job we are going to run a process until the next process with lower prior, lower burst time is available but then we are going to do this only until all the process are available once all the process are available we can directly go in the decreasing order of uh, i mean increasing order of burst times right there is a correlation right one algorithm is converting to other algorithm after some point of time isn't it now in case if all the process arrive at the same time with all the priorities right which means arrival time is all same 1 1 1 1 1 or 2 2 2 2 arrival time is same then non preemptive version and preemptive version will be exactly similar the reason is you are going to pick the one with the highest priority and no other process is going to arrive at later point of time therefore you are going to run that till completion so it is exactly same as uh, preempt non preemptive version right even in shortest job first also if all the process arrive at the same time then non preemptive and preemptive version will be same the reason is uh, you know we are not going to get a uh, shorter pro you know process with lower burst time at later point of time right so just uh, it is interesting to know it okay mm, and now let's finish this uh, completion time and other stuff this uh, rough work i just want to delete this rough work see one more thing i am able to do this given this table but in your examination what they give is they will give you a paper i uh, no, sorry this uh, this is online they will not give you a paper you, you have to see see the question from the screen and then copy it on the paper and then solve it so while you are copying the numbers from the screen onto the rough paper be careful that you don't copy something wrong if you copy anything wrong from there to the paper then it is answer is going to turn out wrong see these questions are very simple and you should not do any calculation mistakes they are you know it is very simple to get some calculation error here and there but then just be careful practice a lot hmm? now what about completion time since this is a preemptive version you are supposed to check the completion time from the right hand right so what is the completion time for p1 p1 got completed 25 and what about p2 p2 got completed 22 and p3 p3 got completed 21 p4 got completed at 12 p5 got completed at 19 p6 got completed at 9 and p7 got completed at 18 isn't it let me check it p1 is 25 p2 is 22 p3 is 21 and p4 is 12 and p5 is 19 and p6 is 9 and p7 is 18 right and after that you can find out the turnaround time turnaround time is difference of these two right completion time minus arrival time so here it is 25 21 19 9 right and what about this 15 and what about this 4 and what about this 12 right completion time minus arrival time fine after finding this turnaround time we can find out the waiting time and then the response time see in this case response time and waiting time will be different i'll show you the difference why hmm? see earlier if you see p1 p1 got scheduled only at one point but now p1 got scheduled at two points therefore p1 is waiting for the entire duration right so for the entire duration between all this from here to here p1 is waiting therefore waiting time is more and uh, response time is less isn't it response time is the point at which it gets uh, scheduled first that is the point on which response time depends on but waiting time depends on the entire duration right 
okay now let's see what about the waiting time for p1 waiting time is turn around time minus burst time this one minus this one which is 21 here and it is 19 here and it is 16 here 4 here 14 here 0 here oh, waiting time of uh, p6 is 0 fine and then waiting time of uh, uh, waiting time of this one is uh, what is this 7 right yeah, waiting time of this one is this one minus burst time which is 6 turn around time minus burst time which is 6 okay now if you observe it only process which is having zero waiting time is the process having highest priority so whenever you have a process with highest priority you are going to complete it right from where whenever it arrived it will get the first priority and will get finished then only other process will execute that is why that only that process got the highest you know, this uh, waiting time as zero so in case if you have ever any time you get a process with highest priority always remember that in this scheduling which means uh, the scheduling is preemptive version in preemptive version it will get the waiting time of zero in non preemptive version it might not get a waiting time of zero because if there is some other process already running we are not going to stop it for the high priority process but here whenever we have high priority process available we are going to stop the other process which is running that is why here we get a zero and what about the response rate response time now response time depends on uh, when it arrived at the first time right now see this uh, p1 is scheduled at zero and it arrived at zero therefore response time is zero p2 has arrived at uh, one and it got immediately scheduled at one therefore it is zero and p3 got you know arrived at 2 and it got immediately scheduled at 2 therefore 0 and p4 arrived at 3 and it got scheduled at 3 therefore 0 and p5 arrived at 4 but it got scheduled at 18 therefore its response is 14 isn't it check that and then p5 p6 p6 arrived at 5 and it got immediately scheduled at 5 therefore its waiting time is 0 and p7 arrived at 9 but it p7 arrived at 9 p7 if you watch it yes it arrived at 9 no no it arrived at 6 p7 arrived at 6 but it got scheduled at 12 therefore its waiting time is 6 right so only these two uh, have i mean these two are having response time which is non zero and why is the response time of all these zero is remaining time remaining uh, process zero is uh, as and when they are available they are the highest process highest priority process available till then that is how we got the process one by one if you watch it the we, we got the process in an increasing order of priority therefore as and when they are available they are immediately scheduled until un, you know, until the next one gets available next highest priority process gets available therefore in this model whenever uh, no whenever the process which has arrived arrived is higher than the, is having the priority which is higher than all the process which have already been already been present then that is going to get a response time of zero because it is going to be scheduled immediately right okay even if you didn't understand theory whatever i was trying to say right whatever i have been speaking till now if you understood this method how to solve it it is fine it is perfectly fine they will not ask you so much so much depth okay and now you can find out what is the average turn around time what is the average waiting time and what is the throughput so what is the throughput of this you know we started at 0 and we finished at 25 therefore the total schedule length is 25 and in this 25 units how many process did i finish 7 units right 7 process therefore throughput is 7 by 25 isn't it so the throughput is number of process which are finished per unit time 7 process got finished in 25 seconds therefore 25 units therefore throughput is 7 by 25 Okay.